Hey guys, uh, I hope you're doing well. And today we are gonna discuss some um, uh, direct cache memory, uh, direct mapping of cache memory. Uh, this is quite simple, but uh, so particularly today um, we'll discuss about the simulation of direct cache mapping. Uh, so I'm not gonna deep into the theory part. So I hope I hope that you have. Uh, very basic or little understanding about red cache mapping after watching this video uh, of uh, the simulation of digit cache mapping so we'll have a crystal clear idea at least uh, about digit cache mapping uh, all your doubts will be cleared by this time okay so the basic thing about the digit cache mapping is uh, here we map a a block of main memory into a line of cache. The basically, a block of main memory may contain multiple number of words. The so basically, the thing is, uh, each cache line can contain multiple number of number of words. So, yeah, the important thing about direct cache mapping is you can uh, map a particular block into only a particular line that's the obstacle of jet cache mapping as other um, tool cache mapping techniques don't have okay that's why they're more flexible than jet cache mapping so let's talk about the jet cache mapping so this is how it works and these things can easily done by using this addresses of the main memory so addresses of the main memory are divided into actually three parts uh, one is word Word actually tells you that how many um, word bit or word offset, and that this bit actually tells you how many uh, words uh, you have in a cache line or in a block of main memory. So the line, uh, line bit or line number or slot number, or sometimes called uh, I didn't know, something called oh, forget it. Uh, okay, is represented uh, is, is the line or slot number is actually uni uniquely identifies uh, the cache line in a cache memory, and the rest of the bits are usually used to identify a word in a cache line, a unique word in a cache line. So the basically that's how it works. So. Let's move to the simulation. Let's go to a browser. Sorry. Let's go to a browser and type in direct cache mapping simulation. So we have some. Okay. Go to the first link and we will have this page. So the basically. Uh, you can select the algorithms you use. Uh, I would recommend you to uh, leave, it, uh, leave things as it is. And so we have to provide some uh, cache memory size and uh, and memory size. So uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna leave uh, cache memory size uh, 14 or maybe uh, make it 32. And uh, we're gonna let it, let it be 2048 of main memory size and offset B. I'll leave it uh, as two. That means we're gonna have four words in a cache line or a main block. So we're gonna get to that shortly. So let's submit it. So here you can see the calculation of everything. And this is the main memory divided into three parts. This is offset or the word. This is the index number or line number or slot number. And this is the tag, as I've told you. So they calculate everything. So you can see it from here. The offset is two bits and they did logarithm of two to the power 32. And they found out that we're gonna need uh, to represent each line of cache. We're gonna need three bits and the total memory represents the 2048 a bit of memory we're gonna need 11 bits and the tag bit is 
3 plus 2 5 and 11 minus 5 is what 6 bit 6 bit and each block is 3 plus 9 3, uh, 6 plus 3 is 9 bits so you can pretty much understand how things work so let's do next uh, next we have to submit a uh, where okay address so before that i'm going to have to show you that if you convert this one ff into a decimal we're going to find it two zero four eight so or seven four seven maybe yeah so we're gonna have we had two to the power or uh, two zero four eight number of blocks and each block contain four words and let's uh, uh, take some numbers from here. Let's assume that the text uh, 3 put 3 here and submit and we're gonna see how JIT cache mapping actually works. So we're gonna do next and first it's gonna take the uh, cache line uh, which cache line should um, the uh, block will be mapped into and and then we're gonna do see that whether it is uh, the valid bit actually means whether the referred um, block is whether in the ca already in the cache or not. If it is, it may be sure one or zero, something like the binary numbers. So the next, it's gonna do an end operation with the tag, and there is nothing in the cache. We haven't destroyed anything in the cache. So there will be a cache miss in the next. As uh, there was this referred block wasn't in the cache, and the cache miss occurred, and that particular block is stored in cache, brought into the cache from the main memory. So as you can see, that 32 bit uh, of cache memory provides us seven lines. I'm oh, sorry, eight lines each line of uh, four bits <sighs> okay next uh, i put another number here let's say four submit it here next uh, i'm going to first forward the process so i can show you everything and this was also not in the cache so it was uh, brought into the cache memory from the main memory so i'm going to put another few uh, very quickly and I'm gonna fast forward everything So here we have some uh, blocks in the cache, uh, quite a few, one, two, three, four, four. So I'm going to do all of this, it's going to take so much time. So here you can see a status where it shows that cache miss occurs and so many times. And you can see the, there is the addresses, three, four, these are the addresses. So the thing is, now suppose this the so last restored 78 uh, the main memory addresses of 78 so if we put 78 here so as this block this particular block is already in the cache so we're gonna have a cache hit so let's slowly so it's first gonna check the line number and then it's gonna do an end operation with the tag number so Really, there was a miss. Okay. Oh, we're gonna put. Okay. We're gonna put seventy-eight, and we're gonna put seventy-eight in the structure, and then put next, and first is gonna. 
uh, check the line bit to identify the unique line and then uh, it can do an end operation with the tag number and we will have a hit as this particular block was already brought into the cache and we have a hit so for this website is um, very effective we're gonna have we can see a list of cache hit or cache miss so the, uh, the thing with the cache hit and miss is pretty simple but the one downside of this direct cache mapping is that uh, some block of main memory can only only be mapped into some particular line so if uh, we refer to some uh, two addresses that are mapped into same line of the cache so you're gonna have a bunch of cache maze so this is the downside of the cache direct cache mapping and this is how it works i hope that this simulation makes your understanding about direct cache mapping more clear at not at least a like crystal clear so if you liked it this video uh, has helped you then give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel and i really do appreciate that and okay good luck with your studies and keep working hard goodbye guys guys